Hi students, this is Laura Klein and this is a video about writing a technology or trend evaluation paper. So this is the assignment for English 100 Essay 3 and um, I'm going to start by talking about topic selection. So the topic. So your topic for this essay is either a trend or a technology. On your assignment sheet, which you can find on Blackboard, there are lots of examples of things you can use, but I've listed a couple here as well. So a trend would be something like fad diets, you know, the master cleanse, things like that, toddler pageants, um, going green, which could include a lot of things, right, from recycling to driving a hybrid car. And a technology is something like text messaging or electric cars, drones. There's all kinds of possibilities for that. So if you're, think if you're having any trouble coming up with a topic that's a trend or a technology, please, please, please email me. So once you have a topic, so my topic for this little mini lecture is going to be text messaging. And I'm going to use that as an example throughout. But once you have a topic, what you need to do is convert that into a research question. So if my topic is texting, then I need to turn it into a question. And the easiest way to do that, right, or the most obvious would just be to say, is text messaging good or bad? But you actually want to be more specific than that. It's going to help you generate your search terms when you start doing your research. So if my topic is texting, I turned it into a question that asks, is text messaging harming written communication? Now you can see from my question that I already maybe have an opinion on text messaging. So I'm not talking about whether text messaging is distracting or isolating. These are other possible topics, right? So if I'm doing any kind of social media or technology um, of that sort, that's one of the questions that we ask a lot, right? Is it making us lonely? Is it making us isolate ourselves? But here I've decided to go with whether or not it's harming written communication. So that makes it a lot more specific. And when I go to do my research, I can pull out these key terms, right? My key terms are like text messaging, written communication, harm. Um, and those things are going to help me find much more specific sources than if I just, if I just put in text messaging in the search field when I'm on the library databases. Okay, so once you've generated a research question, that research question is going to turn into your thesis. So a thesis statement is a statement that sums up the main argument of the paper. It should be representative of what you are going to cover in the paper. And oftentimes it's just an answer to your research question. So with this, where you're looking at pros and cons, there are kind of two possible ways you can go with any question, right? I could say text messaging does harm written communication, or it does not harm written communication. And I have to choose what I believe between those two. But then besides choosing, the other thing I need to do that's super important is I need to make it specific. Why is it harming written communication? And it's going to, um, in order to be representative, I'm going to have to come up with what is going to happen in the body of my paper, right? So sometimes Maybe at the beginning I just want to decide that I do think it's harming written communication. It does harm written communication. But maybe I'm going to leave the because just hanging there for a minute while I work on the body of my paper because I'm going to have a better idea of why I think after I've done my research, after I've written the body of my essay. Okay, So I am going to choose that yes, it does harm written communication. And now i got to think about why. And I suggest, because when you have this essay finished, you do want to include material from research sources, from library databases, books, maybe growing up online. However, I call it the 75-25 rule. 75% 75 of what's in your essay, including your thesis, all the topic sentences for your paragraphs, your intro and conclusion, these should all be from you. The research is the supporting part of your body paragraphs, and it should be about 25% of your essay. So when you send your essay through SafeAssign, you should see that reflected, that you have a less than 25% matching score. Um, so the next thing you have to do once you decide what you're going to write about, what's your question, what's your sort of outline of a thesis, so where's the evidence? So what I want you to do is start with your own thoughts. That's a brainstorm there. And brainstorm five things to support your thesis. So I've got, you know, so students use text messaging language in essays. People text message to avoid conversation, maybe lose some conversational skills. Um, people text message in class, and that makes them miss the info, which affects their written communication. Uh, 
Text messaging can be addictive. I don't know how that great, it, great that is for supporting my thesis, but I'm just brainstorming at this point. And that students have less awareness of tone, or just people in general, workers, have less awareness of tone when they spend too much time communicating in short snippets. So I just want you to make a list of all the possible evidence that you think supports your thesis. So at this point, you haven't even really done much research. Maybe you've done it, but you're not really incorporating it yet. These are your thoughts and ideas. So then what you're going to do when you do go research it is ask, so do others think the same way I do? Um, and then you're going to create your keywords and hit the library. So if I go back to my brainstorming list on evidence, I can see, so do I want to look for text messaging in education, text messaging in writing, text messaging and tone, and I can pull these keywords out from my searches so that I'm looking for this very specific information that's going to support the things that I already think. And I'm looking for that because I want those topic sentences in my essays to be my own. So I'm going to start gathering that information, right? What supports what I believe to be true? Okay, so then the next step is to go, of course, from research to actually writing the paper. So in your introduction, you have maybe your research question at the beginning, um, some background information on your topic, and your thesis statement at the end of that intro paragraph. And then you're going to move into the body of the essay. And this is where most of your information from research is going to go. And we're going to do pie paragraphs. And I've already talked about pie paragraphs in another video, but pie paragraphs have three essential pieces of information. The first is a point, and that's a topic sentence. And this is a very bad drawing of a hand reaching back to grab at the thesis, right? Because whenever you have a topic sentence, it should always relate back to your thesis. It should be something that supports your thesis. Um, the next is an illustration. This is where your evidence lives. This is where the stuff from the research you're doing lives. Properly cited, of course, in, in parent, with parenthetical citation. I'm going to show you an example next. And then the explanation. And this is your thoughts. This is where you explain how you see the evidence is proving your point. And this all needs to be focused in each paragraph on one topic with these three things. So I'm going to show you an example of a pie paragraph. So if my, um, if my thesis is that text messaging affects written communication, one of my main points might be that texting makes us less aware of how we are perceived, okay? So that's my um, topic sentence. It's making a claim, it's arguable, and it also relates back to my thesis. So then I say sometimes students use an overly casual tone in formal writing. Okay, so this is just furthering or m making my claim a little more specific in the second sentence. Mrs. Jones, the Mississippi English instructor, claims even formal research papers have the same carefree vernacular as an email to a buddy. So I totally made that quote up, but this is where the stuff from your research would go, right? And when you incorporate a quote from research, you want to start with what's called a signal phrase. A signal phrase tells you who's talking. So Mrs. Jones, and then I explain who she is, because if I just said Mrs. Jones, right? Mrs. Jones isn't your English teacher. Maybe she is. I don't know who's watching this video. But um, if, you know, you your reader doesn't know who Mrs. Jones is, then how do they know to believe what Mrs. Jones says? How does Mrs. Jones become a credible source? Well, Mrs. Jones is a credible source because she's an English teacher, so I'm giving a little information in the signal phrase there. And then I'm using claims and a comma. We always have a comma before a quote. And then I have my quotation from her. And at the end, I have this. And this is the parenthetical citation. So actually, Mrs. Jones, let's say she didn't write the article. Somebody else whose name was also Jones did. I would say this was quoted in Jones 6. And remember, if you look back on the uh, presentation on MLA, the standard in parenthetical citation is to have the author's last name and a page or paragraph number, depending if those are available. And then at the end, I have a little analysis. When students write essays like emails, they might offend their readers, which could be a big problem if their readers are their bosses. Okay, so I am now transitioning to talk about the workplace. Okay, my next paragraph might be something like, when students lose awareness of tone from text messaging, it affects their ability to be good employees. And maybe that's the next point that's going to support my thesis. So I'm transitioning into that. Okay. 
So you have this list of points, and you got to figure out what's the best way to put those in order and to plug in my research so that I have um, a solid essay that flows, that everything relates back to the thesis. Now, this slide, <laughs> this piece of paper, is about including counter-arguments. So what's a counter-argument? Well, a counter-argument is what the other side says. Maybe there are people out there, and while you were doing your research, you ran across them that say, actually, text messaging is really good for writing. Students get lots of extra practice doing it. They write, you know, three times as much as they did before the advent of cell phones. And maybe I want to include that, but I don't want to include it in a way where I'm just plunking it into my essay and saying, actually, some other people believe that. Ta-da! Because that weakens my argument, right? I lose my credibility. So, if I want to, I made a little outline here. If I want to include counterarguments, I might start with my intro, and then three of points that are main points that are mine, right? So I say this, I say this, I say this. I'm always supporting that with research. But then at the end, I might want to say, but they they say this, but I say. So if I was saying, well, they say that. Actually, students write a lot more, but I say they're not writing quality things. So I'm then overcoming that counterargument with my own argument. So I might be including it, but I'm not weakening my argument that way. In fact, I'm strengthening it because I'm acknowledging that I know there is another side to the story, but that my argument's still better. And then I come to my conclusion. And in your conclusion, the two questions you want to answer is, so what and who cares, right? For whom is this argument important? Who is being affected by this, right? Well, in my case, maybe it's workers of the future. Maybe it's employers of the future. And why does it matter? Well, it matters because if people are having trouble communicating in a in written language and they are um, unable to function and perform in the workplace, then that's going to affect all of us, right? All of society. So those are the questions that you really want to get at in that final paragraph, the conclusion. So once you've written that and gone through all that, this is when you might want to take a glance back at that thesis. Okay, so what did I write about in those body paragraphs? What were my main points? And then bring those main points to answer the because of the thesis. And then you should have a full, cohesive essay that makes a single argument throughout on a focused topic. All right, hopefully that helps with the structure of this essay. Make sure you're also reviewing the information about MLA citation, which is another really important aspect of writing research papers. And if you have any questions, please um, email me or come see me in office hours.